seboko sabakwena ba ha mokotedi ke mokwena wa ha mokotedi ke motho wa ha mwalle wa pakadita wa ha mohlamo mofubedi wa go motho wa ho botlwa ke go moseng wa morena moholo wa ho phamela ya nna phamela na ha se ya hae e le ampiti morasekaki There is a Basotho tradition which maintains that the first man was Dlage, also known as Mubedi. His history is preserved in some clan praises and songs from initiation school where he's quoted saying, "Ke Mubedi, muholwa rasi a para lome, ha ke ka pesa ke a pesitse." Translated, "I am Mubedi, the ancestor of him who dresses the wound. I did not dress myself, I have been dressed." Among Tlake's many great descendants was Gwena, who had three sons, Khabo, Mwato, and Mwagezi. Khabo was the senior son, and he begot Masilo, also known as Musito, who begot Muchudi in the senior house, and Napo in the junior house. Muchudi lived near Mulepolole, and he ruled over Bagwena. Napo, the younger brother of Muchudi, wanted to be independent, and he migrated south with his followers. eventually settling down near Bafugeng who were living around a hill known as Nzwanatsadzi which is famous among Basotho because it was the birthplace of several Bagwena clans the meaning of the word Nzwanatsadzi is rising sun it was there that Nabo married a daughter of the Mufugeng ruler who became the mother of Motebang Motebang was the father of Tholo who founded Bamudibedi and Tholwane who founded Bamunahe Bagwena left Ntswana Tsadzi due to poverty and crossed Lekwa River under the leadership of Munaheng and went on to Futani near Forisberg where they found Bafugeng of Komani as well as Sambarwa who lived in a cave. Munaheng being a man of ability soon began to exercise much influence over Komani whose daughter he married. Bafugeng being an indolent peace loving people do not seem to have made much objection or raised any considerable opposition to this masterful man but accepted the position with their usual indifference and what is more remarkable Bagwena Bamudibedi made no difficulty about becoming the subjects of their juniors the prestige and power of Munaheng grew exceedingly he had many wives children and a large number of cattle His authority extended far and wide. Munaheng was originally called Gadi. He got the name Munaheng in commemoration of a transaction with a San leader who said to Gadi, "Umphema tegwane musuthwaka, make it out near Munaheng waka umutle." That is to say, "Give me some marijuana, my Musuthu, and I will give you my beautiful country." From the date of that rather one-sided transaction, Gadi assumed the name of Munaheng. Munaheng had twin sons called Mohesing and Monyane. Mohesing grew up a happy, reckless individual, a brave warrior and also a poet. He was the bard of Bagwin and his songs are sung to this day. By reason of his bravery and skill in war, he was a great favorite with his father and a leader among his warriors. Mukhesing also known as Ratladi composed all the national songs of war and of initiation schools in which historical facts are preserved up until now Ratladi had three sons by his first wife namely Mabitle Lebego and Hokotle and one by his second wife called Tladi from whom he got his name Ratladi which means the father of Tladi by which he is best known On one occasion he fell suddenly on Bafugeng of Masegwan. They were taken by surprise and fled without resistance. But Ratladi did not attempt to pursue or reap the fruits of his victory. He called off his warriors and led them to Makalani where his cousin Dijo Morena of Mahwahwa lived. Dijo had a wife of extraordinary beauty and Ratladi in the course of friendly visits to his cousin had seen and admired her. He accordingly conceived the idea of subjugating Mahwahwa for his father and capturing the beautiful queen for himself. No one except perhaps a few intimates knew of his intention, 
least of all Mahwakwa, who were taken completely by surprise and driven from their village. All their cattle were captured, and Ratladi's desire was satisfied. He ravished the beautiful queen and led her away captive in advance of his men and the captured cattle. But his triumph was short-lived. Mahwakwa recovered from their panic and with the assistance of their neighbors Basia, who turned out to help them, they fell upon the retiring Baguena, who had no thought of being pursued, killed many of them and recaptured their cattle. Among the killed was Mutloang, son of Munaheng. Mudibedi, who had been left for dead upon the field, recovered consciousness during the night and managed to escape by hiding in the reeds of the river Kubedu until the pursuit ended. Ratladi, who saw the rout of his men with stupefaction, was soon overtaken by Basia and fell before the spear of Tzele, their lord. The beautiful queen, whose name by the way was Madumani, was rescued, but on returning home it was only to learn that she was a widow, her lord and many of her people having fallen in the battle. After the battle, Bamunaheng sought to recover the body of Ratladi in order to bury him, but Mahwakwa drove them off, killing several, including Diseni, son of Silo, who was in charge of the party, so the body was devoured by vultures. This fight with Mahwakwa and Basia had grievous consequences for the tribe of Munaheng, for apart from their actual losses, it was a sad blow to the prestige of the old Moren. Moreover, it was the cause of dispute and disruption among his sons, the family of Mokotedi quarreling with that of Sekake for the widow of Mokloang and with that of Nzane for the widows of Ratladi. The old ruler Munaheng did not live long after the death of his favorite son and died leaving the rest of his family in hopeless conflict with one another. They left Futani and went their separate ways, Nzane to Diswareng, Bamugodedi to Mohobolla, Basegake to Muamam Fubedu, and so on. Munyani, Ratladi's brother, succeeded to what was left of his father's nation, which was not much, and being afraid of the vengeance of Mahwakwa, he moved away westwards to Magwashani. Mugodedi and his followers left Luguru, where they had been living and settled in Mohobulla. Meanwhile, the dispute concerning the widows remained unsettled. According to custom, the right to the widow of Mutluang and the duty of raising up seed to his dead brother belonged to Mukotedi, but the young widow would have nothing to do with him. Mukotedi had suggested that as the widow did not like him, she might be given to Nzane's family, but that again did not meet with approval. Meanwhile, the widow settled the matter for herself by taking a lover called Mwale, by whom she bore a son, who was called Mutsuani. Mwale was a man from the kingdom of Amashubi and the brother of great king Bungani Ganzele. 